I try and keep this short and sweet, um, but it's the middle of March now and uh, hopefully pre preparing for a spring adventure this song, which is the first song in probably a decade. Um, really can't wait to get out. Um, so preparations are starting, one of the first things I've got to do, I was running short of a little bit of hard hook bakes last year. So uh, a few, quite a few people asked me how I go through the process of making my hard hook baits. So I thought I'd try and try and keep a brief account or brief video of what I do. So the first thing I have to do is sieve the base mix. So I've got about 70 kilos of base mix left from uh, last year. I'm going to sieve about 2 to 3 kilos of base mix through my sieve, my homemade sieve. And this is a piece of mesh I've bought off the internet. It's about, the holes are about twice as big as a sieve. A sieve holes are just too small and you're there all day trying to create the flower. So I can just sort of uh, put that in there, rub that through and that gets rid of all the coarse ingredients. Makes the hook baits a lot less porous. See that's running through there very nicely and um, just going to leave me with just the coarse ingredients. There's about three main coarse ingredients in here. I do like quite a porous bait. I like the free bits to break down. I don't want them out there for 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 week a week. I want the, everything to be able to eat them. So uh, difficult to do this holding the video at the same time. So what we're going to be left with basically is a CLO, which is like a biscuit meal. Uh, I've got a kilo. I've got 100 grams per kilo of crunchy kelp. And then I think the other things I suddenly realised are, are, are um, krill meal. There's lots of big bits in the krill, krill meal. And the other two or three fish meals I use as well. Plus any other lumps in any of the other, probably close to a dozen ingredients that I do use. So I do that. We're nearly done on that now. And um, then I'll show you the next process. So I've sifted all the base mix I need. I've got about half a bucket in here. And that's probably a good three kilos. So I sift about um, two, two and a half kilos of the uh, base mix. And then the last third of a kilo, I just bunged a little bit of standard base mix back in there. Just want to, don't want to totally alienate it, make it look totally different from my uh, um, freebies. You know, I want to see a few flecks of the um, krill, meat, krill, crunchy, uh, crunchy kelp. And, and such like in there and give it a, you know, don't want to make it too bulletproof but the main thing is just get loads of little lumps out and stuff like that you know and that's that so that's done that's great so just lower you down a little bit there down you go so that's that mix that's quite fine so the next job to do with this now is mix um, some extra egg album and I will put that in there at about 30 grams, 30, 25 grams, 30 grams per kilo. There's already 25 grams per kilo of egg album in the actual base mix itself. Don't want to do, go too crazy because um, otherwise uh, the bait might de deform when you boil it. And then the next ingredient, oh dear, oops, made a bit of a mess there, is. Um, Wheat gluten. So uh, again, there's no wheat gluten in the uh, mix. You know, I wouldn't use wheat gluten in the free bits because it'd just seal in all the goodness too much. But this stuff's great, and I could put that in there about sort of 40 to 50 grams per kilo, and that'll give the bait a bit of rubberiness as well throughout the bait. So these will be mixed really well. I shall weigh out how much base mix I've got here and then I will add those two dry ingredients accordingly and I might just add a little extra touch of uh, green lip mussel powder in there um, just to give it an extra punch I'd rather get, use more attractive powders and liquid because you put too much liquid and egg in the bait then you know then you're gonna reverse what you're trying to achieve so that's the next process mix those two dry ingredients Gonna zero an empty bucket on my balance scales. And then gonna weigh this eight feet. 
what the seat may be. Yeah, so we have got um, just over three kilos. So you want to even this up to bang on three kilos. There you go. So it's bang on three kilos of base mix in there. And then now I've just got to do a little bit of simple maths. So for putting in, I'm going to put in 30 grams per kilo um, to the base mix. I think that'll be plenty. So I'm going to put in nine, 30 grams, so 90 grams. Put that out. There you go, just the wrong side of 100 grams. So about that much in three kilos. Look at it like that, it looks a lot. Let me just take a little bit. I don't want to go too much, you do not want to go too much, otherwise like, all this work is for nothing. Do that and then the wheat gluten. So again, um, three kilos, happy to put in about 40 grams per kilo of this. So we go just the other side of uh, 100 grams, try and do about 120. That's the wheat gluten. So there we go. Pop that all in there. So and then also I've got 50 grams of um, no, not more, about, 70, about 65 grams per kilo of green lip muscle powder in the mix as it is. So I think I'm going to put in about another 30 grams per kilo. So we'll just go just for a, um, just shy of a, I won't go too much. Let's give it a little bit more. Maybe about 75. Just give it a little bit more because that leaks off. But be careful because obviously this is a soluble ingredient. So you know if you get back into your base mix making your base mix and all the rest of it you never really want to go oh, max 25 20 20 percent 20 22 and a half 20 percent um soluble powders and green lip muscle is one of them as long along with all the milk proteins like rennet acid sodium casein uh whey protein concentrate blood powders that sort of thing. Egg, egg album is even semi-soluble, um, so you've got to be a bit careful. So, yeah, but this is going to be a good way to give a, my hook bait a good punch of good leakage of lovely flavour and, 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 without having to ha add a load of liquids. Because once I've made the boilie, I can soak my liquids, soak my baits in liquids after for as long or short as I want. But obviously we'll get to that later so i'm going to put this in there there we go right go back to mixing so i'll get back to you in a little while okay so um just a few little tips as i go along really so um i've got two boilie rollers now if you've watched my uh, youtube channel you'll see that i've uh, got a 20 and a 24 mil boilie roller which is absolutely great bits of kit but for making hard hook baits, you can't be a, a gardener rolling table still. Uh, you, you can just get everything just right. You can roll them back plenty of times to get a, a good hard boilie. You know, good. For, you get a lot of bait. You want to squeeze as much bait into that ball as possible to make it dense. But yeah. Um, so one of the first things to do is put a squirt of vegetable oil on the runners. He's been sat outside all winter. And then just um, just coat all the runners. A little bit of a process to this, but trust me, it really is worth it. And that runs in there really nicely now. And we're pretty much good to go now um, for uh, rolling the baits. So we're well, making the mix. So I will gather my thoughts, and I'll get back to you in a minute. The eggs, mix the eggs, and all the rest of it. So I don't tend to count the eggs out and then 
if I'm doing my base mix I normally do a 20 egg mix or two litre or sorry half a litre that is or, or a whole litre of egg um, so the other trick to making your, bait, your hard hookers is don't use all the egg yolks so this is going to be about 10 to a dozen eggs uh, per mix it probably a little bit more because I'm going to discard um, half of the egg yolks the egg yolks uh, do not help with um, any binding at all obviously they're a great food source got a lot of fat and etc in them but we don't need them in a hook bait so we discard 50% of the yolks but the, the key here is for me because I'm using these for uh, public lake fishing, sometimes I'm fishing out with extreme ranges. These baits need to last 24 hours, 48 hours. I'm quite happy to keep a bait out there 48, 48 hours. Content with. So we're just going to mix that up and then we'll get to uh, the flavours. So, keep the normal bulk flavours around the same. For a minute now. So use 20 ml of salmon oil in the base mix. So I'll do about 20 ml again. No point doubling them up, you're only reducing uh, what the egg's going to do. Too much uh, liquid, 20 ml green lip muscle liquid. I might go a little bit more on that because that is the base flavour. Let me put about 35 in there. This is a lovely flavour. And then a bit of marine amino. This is really salty. So. Going away from the marine amino, going back to the ultra amino. See, see more so I do ultra amino again, which is what I always used to use. It's still quite a salty ingredient, but the marine amino really did change what the bait was like. It's just a... So, for the John Baker, I don't want to go too crazy because, again, I'm going to be probably soaking the baits anyway. I've got baits in the freezer now um, that that have um, got you know a mix of the liquid foods in them, and um, <coughs> I had a little extra dash of plum, black pepper, and tailing in it anyway. Just sort of maybe just a meal or something like that of each. <coughs> but I will up that a little bit. I'll be up that as three meal per kilo normally. I'll go up to about four and a half meal of the plum. Let's give it a bit of an extra kick. It's super strong stuff. Got recommended to try this stuff by a friend of mine. And I've got to say, it's a phenomenal flavour. So, so strong. And then black pepper. We use a meal per kilo. I will stick with a meal, I think. Maybe a fraction. Not too much, so just a little squirt in there. And then tailing, I will probably go tailing. I was 1.5 mil per kilo, so I'm probably going to go to about add another mil, about two and a half mil, something like that. Almost left in this one. See what we'll work. pull it out. Two and a half mil. Brilliant. And that's that bottle done. Perfect. Pretty cheap stuff. There. So, mix all that lot up. Give it a good whiz around. Check if I've done everything. Salmon oil, mystery liquid, 
muscle, rumino, ultra rumino, plum, tailing, black pepper, all in there. Okay, so that's mixing nicely now. Um, taking my time to get this absolutely perfect because it is a good bait. Too sticky, the, uh, the board is will be difficult to roll, too dry, and there's the possibility of them cracking or not rolling very well on the table. So, I don't really take as much care when I'm doing the freebies. Let's have a little look, don't put your hand in that. Yeah, so get in there. That's a lethal bit of machinery this. Any of you guys got one of these, do not put your hands anywhere near that uh, when you are mixing. It is a lethal bit of equipment and that will literally rip your hand right off and cause a severe amount of damage. So, you know, any of you uh, youngsters getting into bait bowl and acquire these an industrial piece of equipment, quite cheap, um, but they are deadly, so pay attention. The three mixes, sort of, uh, get in a groove, you know exactly what you want, what the table wants, more to the point. Whether you use a manual one like I am for this job, there we go, that's really nice, just right, doesn't need anything added extra of some firmer. So there we go, a nice kilo mix and um, yes yeah, really nice and I might even top tip take a little bit of that off just have a little pot um, so I've got some nice paste could be a good little edge especially in the spring fishing not using lots of bait so um, attraction could be a little bit more important. For your oily roller, five kilo roller, and we've got this contraption here, and you've probably seen me use it before. Stand this on the ground, and then you can turn the boily roller machine upside down, take the nozzle off, just press it down on that, rather than have to unscrew both ends all the time. It's pain, so. Just make sure the vent's open, little knot, so it's all been cleaned for the winter. So there's a little bit of vegetable oil in there as lubricant because there's two big rubber o-rings in the plunger. Just helps everything move really, really well. Because once you use it a few times it does get bunged up, the threads get a little bit bunged up and can be a bit of a pain to undo. So hence I'd rather just do one side rather than doing two and swapping the nozzle around from one end to the other makes life just a little bit easier especially when you're doing 10 20 30 40 50 kilos a day sometimes i do don't pinch it up plenty of thread pop that on there a little bit of vegetable oil on the rollers there we go and um then cut the air and then I think we're good to go, so I'll be back in a minute and turn this compressor on, it's going to be noisy. The nozzle's on pre-cut, so it should roll the perfect 20 mil boilie, so we're doing 20 first of all. If I want to make dumbbells, I can just stretch the sausage out a little bit more, just get a little bit more of a dumbbell boilie. There's never any real reason for me to use anything much smaller than a 20 mil really, single 20 mil, which I did use last autumn. So, uh, yeah, so there we go. A little bit too oily, first of all, so not the best shape, it's trouble. And, yeah, but it's okay. So a bit too much oil on the table so the balls aren't really rolling very well but we can uh, 
just wipe a bit of that oil off. Make, make the boil grip a little bit more. I need a little bit of oil on there, but probably it's a hardish, it's a bit stiffer, it's not very sticky. Just roll a lot of that. Right, let's try another one. Just a little bit on the fat side, could have stretched it out a little bit. Yeah, if you want perfect bakes, so not bad, but just a little bit oval. And I like a round bait, I like it because it just balances well for your rig. So just stretch it a little bit. Let's try another one. get the same effect on a machine there you go that is perfectly round beautiful lovely another top tip another top tip here I've said this before this is just a standard pan landing net and I use chip fat fryer outside which I've shown before and you've normally got a metal tray but they mark the bait so much which is okay with freebies I'm only boating them out but if you guys are sticking them out you want nice smooth baits because they fly a lot better this is brilliant lovely soft mesh I've had this for years works an absolute treat I should probably do just perfect absolutely perfect great stuff right I'm gonna cut it there and I'll get back to you in a bit there you go, so it's a nice little batch of uh, 20 mil 20 boilers there. As you can see, lots of vegetable on them at the minute. Nice and shiny. I've got a little bit uh, bad with my timing, just waiting for the chip pan water to boil up. And then we can pop these in. And they will go in there for, well, three minutes for the 20s, for four and a half, five minutes for the uh, 20, 24s. So uh, I think we're just coming up to the boil now. Don't want these boilers also to be sat around too long in this tray. It's already starting to get a flat edge on them. Normally I'd have it boiling and just do small amounts and get them uh, get them in the boiling water straight away so you don't get a flat spot on them. One of the other things I forgot to add when you're adding the powders is you don't want to go too much also because what can also happen is your baits will float then all you've got is a couple of kilos of pop-ups so which is all right for neutral density normally they'll come up and float anyway and then when you let them cool off you try them in your uh, in, in a glass of water just make sure they still sink once they cooled right off they could float for a little while so that is one of the other big things big no no's about using too much of a hardening ingredient could make them float so the other things will make them float in your base mix material are krill meal which I have got krill um, in the bait and uh, a sodium caseinet casein as well so casein sorry sodium caseinet yeah um, and then there's a couple of other things as well uh, which also make them float as well. So I'm going to do a quick little batch here. I've got about literally a dozen boiling away at the minute. Just come to the boil. We'll give them a couple of minutes and then we'll let them cool. Um, then we'll hopefully, fingers crossed, we're all right. But we should be. I've done this, this, uh, this same mix many times for hard hookers. So there we go. We have success. Nothing floating. They all very quite a dense boily so I just tested those few out in the water they're getting really hard straight away get these in a mushroom tray and they'll be fine don't need to test the rest obviously just these first few you never know <coughs> you know it's a 
it, it, it's a pretty standard recipe what I'm doing but sometimes <laughs> something changes but uh, yeah they're, they're good they're good and they're good and hard and they'll dry out the tree so get these out of the water get them in the tray and get the rest done and we'll get back to you later okay so uh, that first batch was in there for about um, I suppose about sort of three minutes or so I didn't time it so just get one of the disfigured ones out just gonna cut it in half and as you can see there is no paste in that at all totally rock hard all the way through and that will go rock hard by this time tomorrow that would be a very fishable bait that you'd be confident of fishing with uh, the 24 hours in in most situations extreme situations you know as soon as you start drying them for a month they're great Okay, so uh, that's all the 20 mils done. Swapped over to the uh, 24 mil table. And uh, paste this uh, not gone too hard. And these are rolling with perfection. They really are. Couldn't ask any better of these, really. So pop those in, in the... Uh, Boiling water now, not too many, don't matter if I add a few more. Okay. Just starting to get a bit hard, it's what happens when it gets a bit too firm, they just start to split open. Could probably rescue that paste, another one there, just got a little bit rock, just starting to crack open. That's a sign of um, your base mix is getting a bit dry. Some people say, oh, you haven't got enough oil in it or something like that. It's just purely because your base mix is just going off the wrong way. Just getting a little bit too, too hard and then starts to break open. And no amount of binders or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with the base mix. We'll uh, stop that. Just always getting that fine line between not too sticky and not too hard. There we go, so second uh, mix. Repeat, repeat the process again. There you go, got a lovely ball of just perfect dough there. So we're gonna get this in. <coughs> and roll these 24s out. And I'm gonna have enough here for the next couple of years at least. Now it all depends on what venues I fish really. So there we go, that's the hook baits uh, all finished. I think I've got enough here now to keep me going for the next uh, few years. Easily, probably longer. So, done a <coughs> kilo of, uh, tw well just under a kilo of 20 mils and then a, sort of a kilo and a quarter, kilo and a third of 22 mils. And they've turned out absolutely fantastically. They've all uh, darkened off now. And, uh, they're all, they're all pretty good, they're really hard, nice and round, reasonably round and for the weekend. Let them skin up a little bit, let them dry up a little bit, get a bit of moisture out of them. Then I'll bag them up in, then I'll bag them up in Ziploc bags and, um, and um, yeah, just freeze them. And then as I want to take them out, I'll put them in my little mini drying sacks, mesh drying sacks, and dry them out as I need them and then glug them or whatever I need to do. So that's that. So, so uh, okay, so next day, obviously I uh, finished all the bait making, or hook bait making yesterday. Uh, it's getting a little bit dark, so like, it's probably not that great. But um, we're lucky we've got some a really nice windy dry day outside, wind's blowing, as you can see. So leave the conservatory door open and uh, get some really really good airflow in here and as a result 
uh, these are, are drying a tree so you can really see them now there's a few in there that the, where they got a bit dry and they've just cracked in the middle but even that's so hard but that you know I wouldn't put that out but most of them are, are rock hard so we'll go through that lot a bit of quality control just where you know I wanted the base mix to be as stiff as possible to keep the shape of the boilie nice and round and nice and hard and there's the 20, that was the 20s and this is the 24s really nice and hard and round these are rock hard the, these would do for 24 hours in most situations but I'm going to leave these out because we've got some nice dry weather now the air's not humid and let these dry for as, as long as possible at least a week and then before I freeze them so that's good so you know we've got as I said yesterday a couple of years supply of up baits there for the amount of fishing I do and then uh, the reason why I'm making them because I've got a bit low so there's my chest freezer it's a little bit empty so the remains of last year's freebies in there got about uh, probably 25 kilos of bait out of the 180 I took with me this is a bag of hard hookers here it's a mixture of 20 and 24s there that's all I've got left but here's all my pots here and I bought them out for a little while ago I, I got them pre-soaking um, like I say this is uh, what I use these Tupperware tubs are brilliant and uh, these are sort of three times the volume of a normal boilie tub and they're brilliant when you're using bigger baits so there you go there's a bunch of 24 millers in there and they've all been soaking with um, you know a mixture of everything I said yesterday and I left them out for sort of probably a, about a month uh, when I come back from a fishing trip last autumn and then I put them in the freezer don't because they will go off it might it might go a bit rancid in the end especially with the sand oil in there so I've got lots like that so I put them back in the freezer now and that'll keep them to make sure oh that's some there's some 30 millers there and then uh, got two tubs of each got you know, two tubs of 20 20 mils two tubs of uh, 24s and then these probably don't need the reason but these are sometimes can give me an edge so I do like the keys this is frozen on there we go and this is a spicy squid goo and supreme and they've been soaking lovely so we go these they can make a big difference so I've always got them try not to take too much with me with the hook baits a few different types of pop up but that's about it I don't bother making pop ups if they're good enough so uh, yeah that's it bait making complete that's my top tips I'll see I don't leave these out uh, all the time just get them soaked and then freeze them don't want them going smelling a bit rancid when I next come to use them especially if it might be till the summer or autumn so uh, and then just get them out when I want to use them so uh, that's it bait making complete um, until I next see you on one of my videos on the bank somewhere in the middle of France <laughs>